right, I want to welcome everybody to uh, City Hall on November 5th. Sorry, I apologize to all of you for being a little bit late. One would think something special is going on here, like the president's going to show up or something. The streets are all blocked up, so I uh, had a little trouble getting here, so I apologize to all of you. Prior to the start of our meeting tonight, uh, our own council member, Hallie Grease, has a message. Hallie, you all stand up? Please. All right, if everybody will stand up and uh, participate. Uh, please join me in prayer. Uh, dear God, as we bow before you this afternoon, God, we just give you all the praise for being God, and you alone are worthy. As we stand on the eve of the election, we ask for protection for our candidates, that they would seek you above all else. God, we pray that you would open the heart and mind of each voter to listen to your voice. Tomorrow we vote for our next president, for the national and state leaders in our government. God, you know the plans you have for our nation. You know and see what our nation needs, not only now, but far into the future. We pray that you, your will will be done. We humble ourselves in your presence tonight, and we pray that you would continue to bless our great nation. We pray for wisdom tonight as we discuss local matters, and we pray for wisdom as we vote for our leaders tomorrow. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Ask the clerk to take roll, please. County? Here. Coleman? Here. Moore? Here. Grease? Here. Mahaffey? Here. Hensley? Here. Meyer? Here. We have a quorum. We have a motion to approve the agenda as presented and or as amended. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved. Let's uh, also now approve the consent agenda. That's items 3 through 31. Uh, members of the council and the audience, these are items that are enacted as one roll call vote without separate discussion unless somebody, either a council member or someone from the audience, pulls one for additional discussion. Again, tonight those are items 3 through 31. Item 6, council member Moore and county vote no. Are there any other items anybody would like to pull for additional? Yes, sir. Number 19. 19. Any others? All right, could we have a motion for the balance, please? Moved. It's been moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The items pass. That takes us to item 19. These are communications uh, from planning and zoning. 19 is regarding a request from Eric R. Reisenberg Living Trust for vacation of the west 15 feet of 24th Drive between Franklin Avenue and Washington Avenue and it's subject to conditions. Sir, you give us your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Eric Riesenberg, 5432 Harwood Drive, Des Moines, Iowa, 50312. Uh, I have a couple handouts. This is just about the conditions that were uh, suggested by plan and zoning. Uh, my request is they have to vacate without the requirement for a specific fence design. Uh, I bought this vacant property in an adjacent house at 1803 26th Street with the intent to combine them into a single family residence. The vacant property has been, been neglected for many years with uncontrolled plant growth, no fence and no lighting, 24 drive pr provides easy access for constant illegal dumping, including furniture and appliances. I have some overheads if you want to see. This is, these are photos are taken of the property. Uh, that's a sofa, television, chair. There's also a vacuum. Uh, there was a mattress I just removed today, a full-size sleeping mattress. Thank you. Uh, this shows 24 Drive. It shows the growth. It hasn't been cleared from my perspective in decades, and that's why it's hard to pass on that street. Uh, it's really hard for two vehicles to get by on one uh, one. At, at the same time. Uh, so that, that's just to show you the area that I'm talking about. Uh, I'm sorry, there is one more. Uh, this is a map of the topography of the area. It's really hard to see, but you can, if you, if you could see it, you would see, uh, it shows the land slopes almost at the rate of one foot per foot that you travel. So if you're going into it one foot, it can slope down one foot. It's shaped like a bowl. Uh, that's why the city is never going to expand that street, uh, 24 Drive. That's why the city agreed, or the city staff agreed to the vacate, recommend the vacate. Uh, 
24 Drive provides easy access for constant illegal dumping, including furniture and appliances, dozens of liquor bottles, an IV needle have been cleared away, and one of my chipper and leaf vacuums have been stolen during the past month since I've owned the property. Uh, the current 22-foot right-of-way means a fence outside the right-of-way would be ineffective at stopping the public dump dumping. The proposed requirement for a fence to be either black chain link or cedar and copper imposes a large design and, co design and cost burden without a benefit over other open air fence designs. 24 Drive will require about 600 feet of fencing and the fence is a large design and cost decision. Other fence designs I'm considering are white ranch style, which is like this, uh, which driving around Des Moines is quite common. Here's another variation of that. Uh, here's a wrought iron fence. And this is the actual one that I've been considering. It's called Cedar and, Cedar and Copper, although uh, currently treated lumber and a metal other than copper are used because of the cost of the copper. But those are the other fences that I'm considering. They're all open air, at least 50%. The white ranch style is the, you know, uh, contains some wood, but it's pretty popular around Des Moines. Uh, no member of the public requested a fence design requirement. The Drake Neighborhood Association supports the vacate without the fence design restriction. Mm -hmm. Donna Musso is the only neighbor who appeared at the plan and zoning meeting. I have a letter from her, and I have copies I can pass out, uh, explaining her intent was to gather more information and that she supports the vacate without restrictions. I have not chosen a fence design, but my current intent is this cedar and copper. Uh, Black chain link is particularly, is particularly hard to install on this topography and hard to repair if vandalized. I don't want to uh, be forced to spend ten dollars or $20,000 for an institutional style fence. Uh, it just wouldn't be my preference. And uh, that it, that's basically my only request is to not require, you know, the chain link, uh, not to put in the specific fence design requirement. Yes. As I look at the um, P and Z document, it, the condition says any fence constructed shall be 15 feet east of the existing property line. Based upon the condition that's in here, it doesn't specify. Uh, let me get it. Fence. Well, it, I'm not sure what page you're looking at. Here's what I have from what they sent to you. If you look at the last condition number two, any fence constructed shall be within 15 feet. That's that material will be either copper cedar or black chain link fence. It should be on the front page of the packet that you got. Uh, and it was, it was just some, someone on the plan and, design, plan and zoning committee had come up with the idea that black chain link would look nice, but no one has requested it. Donna Musso, I have a letter from her. I have copies I can pass out. Uh, this, the front side uh, is the letter from Donna and the back has the uh, the neighborhood association email on it, just stating. Uh, is this the same packet? Yes, it is. Is this the same? Is this the same? I'll move to receive and file. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I, I don't necessarily have any particular objections to what's been suggested. I don't know that we have an action item in front of us, but I would refer his comments to the city manager and staff to, to review and work with him. So uh, motion would be to receive and file for the city manager for comment and refer back to appropriate department. Correct. Mr. Mayor and Council, that's just fine. Uh, this was an item to receive file, refer back to us to prepare all the paperwork and get it back before you for formal hearing. So in that process, we'll be happy to, okay. to meet with them and see if we can work something out. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a motion. <coughs> Seven yes. <coughs> All right, that completes the consent agenda and takes us to item 32, which is ordinances. 
first consideration. Item 32 is amending Chapter 114 of the Municipal Code regarding traffic regulation changes as follows. This is in reference to Council Communication Number 12-563. A is parking restrictions uh, for a new roadway, Mulberry Street from 13th to 15th Street. B, parking restrictions, uh, Ingersoll Avenue from Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway to 28th Street. C, a yield sign at Woodland Avenue at Harwood Drive. D is a parking restriction, 42nd Street north of Urbandale Avenue. E is a revision of school parking restriction, California Drive from 917 California to 920 43rd Street. C is the removal of the 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. parking restriction, 19th Street between Center and Cottage Grove. G is removal of the 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. parking restriction in Wat Watson Paolo, B Powell uh, between 6th Avenue and 3rd Street. And H is parking restrictions uh, due to construction of the new DART facility, Cherry Street from 6th Avenue to 7th Street, and both 6th Avenue and 7th Street from Cherry to Vine. Anybody have any questions on those amendments? If there's no um, comments, I'll move this. And if it has unanimous support, I'll move the non-pre-published rules um, so we can move forward on these before bad weather hits. Seven yes. Mayor, if it's uh, okay with you, I'll move the non-pre-published rules if that wasn't part of the first, I think the way I said I it. I think it the way you said it sounded like it was, but. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, item 33 is a communication report, a petition from area residents uh, requesting that the builder consider constructing condominiums rather than apartments in the 5800 block of Southeast 24th Street. Good evening. Um, my name is Judy Shepard. Yep. I live at 5513 Southeast 24th Des Moines. Um, I live on the south side at the Chateaus of Carmen Estates. Um, we moved into our town home about six years ago. Um, I drew up the petition, which I'm going to give to. Thank Mr. you very Coleman. much. I'll move to uh, receive and file the petition. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I drew up this petition and went to my neighbors asking them to sign it if they were opposed to apartments being built in the 5800 block of Southeast 24th. Of all the households I visited, everyone was more than happy to sign the petition um, asking Jerry's Homes and the city of Des Moines, asking that apartments not be in our area. This is a wonderful community and everyone seems to know their immediate neighbors and watch out for them. There are a number of retirees as well as young families. There are single family homes as well, of, as well as those in the various associations. We have the Chateaus at Carmen Estates t townhomes, the Arbors townhomes, the Vineyards One and Vineyards Two condominiums. We are surrounded by parks, wooded area, farm fields, and single family homes. Most everyone told me they love this area and they will do what it takes to keep the neighborhood nice. I was able to contact 23 home, 63 homeowners and only um, time uh, kept me from visiting everyone in the area. Um, there's another speaker that would, would like to speak. His name is Jim Waltrip. So we'll call him up. What's the plan say for this? Good evening. My name is James Waltrip. I live at uh, 2415 Hart Avenue in Southeast Des Moines in a planned community development uh, called the Chateaus at Carmen Estates. Carmen Estates includes homeowners associations other than the Chateaus, namely Vineyards One, Vineyards Two, and the Arbors. I am here to protest a new and different plan the builder has to construct apartment buildings on the south side that were originally planned to be condominiums, which would be primarily owned by occupants. The builder is Jerry's Homes, and the area is east of Indianola Avenue, south of Hart, east of uh, 24th Street, and north of Peyton. 
the addresses of these apartment buildings would be on Southeast 24th Street. More than six years ago, when my wife and I bought our townhouse on Hart Avenue, we looked at the entire uh, planned community development and were satisfied that we were moving into an area where Covenants and the Condo Homeowners, Homeowners Association of Vineyards II, which was being built behind us, uh, also part of per Carmen Estates, limited the percentage of rental homes. That made us comfortable that we were uh, in a neighborhood that we would be stable and home values would not be affected by too many rental units. We added a sunroom and a finished lower level uh, to our townhouse, bringing the cost to something over $200,000. Now, nearly six and a half years later, we have been told that the owner-occupied condos planned to be built right behind us will be 100% rentals, apartment buildings, if you will, not condo units that would be sold to individuals. Uh, as I understand it, uh, the three large buildings to be constructed will differ from the three condo buildings that are already there only slightly since they will have a different colored siding and different colored brick. This news has many of the residents in our homeowners association upset and here's why. The probable loss in home values will have a crippling effect on our ability to sell our homes when the time comes. We bought in Carmen Estates in this PCD at Carmen Estates because uh, home ownership generally creates a more stable neighborhood and we were told that rentals would be kept to a small percentage as stated in the bylaws of the Condominium Homeowners Association Vineyards II. Should the rentals become a reality, each homeowner in the uh, chateaus will most likely eventually appeal their real estate taxes due to a drop in actual home values. Of course, home values are down maybe 10% anyway, but that's due to the market. If the appeal, appeals are successful, this would probably result in less tax revenue for the city and the county. I will appreciate your review, if you will review our situation and do what you can uh, to ensure that Jerry's abides by the PCD original plan that was in effect when approved by the city and used as a sales tool by Jerry's home. Thank you. All right, Brian. Uh, thanks, Mayor. And uh, both Jim and Judy emailed me on this issue, and I did talk to um, Phil Delafield, who uh, responded. And and uh, what I'd like tonight, uh, perhaps, is to see if. Uh, Phil, if you could get with the neighbors uh, tonight and maybe set up a meeting and, and try and figure this out with them. I know what you told me was that they appear to be in compliance with their PUD, but perhaps there's these covenants out there that may have these, uh, you know, cause of actions for them to pursue. And do you want to maybe address it on mic uh, up here, Phil, a little bit, or if, if that's okay with the council? Mayor, is that okay? Yeah, I think that it uh, it sounds like some ultimately we're going to receive and file and refer to manager and legal and uh, Phil's department to try to work it out not only with the neighborhood but also with the developer of the ground and see what right. avenues we may be able to go down. I don't know that we have lots of latitude on, on it, but Phil, do you want to spend a minute? Yeah, the motion will be after Phil's done to receive and file and, and hopefully Phil can set up a meeting and try and work this out. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of Council, Phil Delafield, Community Development Department. Uh, yes, this is a PUD. It is uh, set up uh, in the original documents to uh, suggest that a condominium arrangement is uh, what is has been planned. According to the information that we have available to us, the ownership structure is still a condominium ownership structure. City zoning has difficulty uh, regulating based on the occupants of the building. We can encourage that the properties be owner occupied, but we can't base our codes, our zoning ordinances on the fact that they are rental or non-rental. We don't enforce private covenants, so uh, we can work with the property owners to see what options they may have along those lines, and we can certainly work to set up a meeting with the developer. Is, is the, the thing I'm kind of stuck on is that the, the way they have it 
are proposing that it be set up is that it be proposed as a condominium but then rented how, how would that work just as if you owned your own private home and chose to rent it out as long as you could meet the rental codes the property can be rented we can't restrict how you own your single pro single property so okay. it would be in the same fashion okay the motion uh, if there's no other comments will be to uh, receive file and refer it back to you to set up the meeting hopefully with them and the uh, the owners and try and work this out happy to do so thanks Bill. thank you that's the motion you're right seven yes I maybe. Uh, it takes us to item 34, receipt of a petition to establish the Ingersoll Grand Self-Supported Municipal Improvement District, the SMID. A, is the intent to voluntarily limit the levy for the Grand Ingersoll Grand Self-Supported Municipal Improvement District, SMID. Uh, Ms. Hensley, do you want to make a comment on this? Uh, happy to make a comment on this. We've got a uh, just a wonderful group of volunteers led by uh, Ted Irvine that have been uh, soliciting and collecting all of the petitions and um, we are well beyond the minimum requirements required for the petitions so that we can move this forward set a date of hearing and um, begin the process and working with the volunteers and Ted and um, everybody involved with Ingersoll restoration they will continue to collect petitions uh, to ensure that uh, they've actually touched base with the property owners. I think there are over 200 um, properties within the uh, SMID, and um, they've made great progress. Uh, we're excited about it. Reaction's been very positive. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to move uh, this item. Anybody in the audience to speak? <coughs> Seeing none. SMIDs are a good tool. Great tool. Good, good for Beaver Day too sometimes. I will abstain on this uh, item as we nice of our own a property in, within the district. Just a quick note, congratulations to the Ingersoll people. I think it's really good and Thank you. exciting. Great things uh, happening down there All right, too. great things yeah. happening all over the city. How about let's open the hearings. Meyer and Meyer, move it Ingersoll. At 501. What's that? First hearing item mm -hmm. is item 35, items regarding property at 4312, 4282, 4250, 4216 East 50th Street, Hubble Properties 2, LC is the owner, represented by Steve Nyber. Uh, the roll call uh, contains an alternative motion. A is to amend the Des Moines 2020 Community Character Plan future land use designation from plan business park to medium density residential. The plan and zone commission motion failed due to the lack of required seven affirmative votes. Requires six, six votes for approval on that item A. Item B is hearing on a rezoning of the property from limited M1 light industrial to R3 multifamily residential to allow the development of up to 200 residential apartments and requires six votes for approval. And C is the first consideration of the ordinance above and that requires six votes for approval. All right, is there anybody here to like make comment on item 35. Steve Neighbor, Hubble Realty Company, 6900 West Town Parkway, West Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, here to give you a few facts about what we're trying to do here. This is a property that was originally uh, developed in Polk County. It was brought in the city of Des Moines in 2006 as M1. Uh, currently, we have had uh, marginal success with it as a uh, M1 use. Primarily, uh, most interest has been on the east side of the road. Uh, along the east, uh, we have not had any users short of the mini storage. Uh, use on the west. So what we're proposing to do is to take the south four lots and rezone those to multifamily. 
they had joined the single family Summersfield development that we developed, uh, and also then uh, single family, which is, I think, zoned for the south. So this would be a good transitional use between the existing single family and the M1 uses. Um, we did have uh, a neighborhood meeting on the 26th, and really there was three points that came out of that meeting. One was the neighborhoods desire Summersfield uh, to the west for us not to connect to Aurora. They don't want the possibility of truck traffic running through Aurora. Aurora currently is a 20-foot wide rural section. Uh, 50th Street, which is the main street through going north-south, is a 30-foot section that's uh, fully improved to city standards. That's where we would make our connections for our proposed site plan. Steve, can you show me where Aurora is on that map that you've got on? The yes. Aurora is right here. Okay. There's a section right here that is in the county. There is no right-of-way platted uh, on our parcel for Aurora to extend through. Okay. Thank you. Here's a, here's a plan of what we're talking about. So we're proposing a two-phase development uh, fronting on to Northeast 50th. Aurora would be over here. One of the other comments that came up from the neighborhood meeting is the school. Uh, we did meet with Kevin Walker, the principal of Delaware Ele Elementary there at the Southeast Polk School District. Um, he has no concern about overcrowding. We did talk at length with him about a connection to the school so the students, uh, potential students from our development can get over to the school and develop a route uh, from our project along the uh, lot here and then connecting into the Summersfield sidewalk connection to get to out to 46th to the school. So uh, we worked that out with Kevin and I think we've got a good solution for access to the school. Um, the other concern that came up in the neighborhood meeting was buffering, uh, making sure that we were not going to take down any of the existing trees that lie to the west. Um, that, in fact, is the case. We're not going to take them down. So there's quite a healthy natural vegetation along that tree line that's going to remain as buffering to the single family to the west. We also then put our garages along that west elevation, as you can see right here, that will form an additional buffer. So. Um, Staff did recommend denial at PNZ. Um, the vote was 6 4 to uh, pass it on to council in our favor. Um, one of the things that was talked about is, is access. Um, at the time, there was some confusion whether it was a bus stop. There is a bus stop up at Northeast 50th and Hubble. Um, we would, I guess, there's, I, I've also heard since then there's concern about how would this, uh, the residents get up to that bus stop. One of the things we would do and are willing to do is to put a sidewalk uh, now up to that bus stop uh, across those vacant lots, even though they're not developed. If that, uh, that will ease that and make that accessible up to the bus stop up at uh, Hubble and 50th. We can put a bike rack there too if that helps. The other thing that was cited is uh, changing the use in M1 Park. And really, I guess, the reason we chose the lots we did was these lots are a good buffer between the single family that's going to be in the southwest corner of the development. Um, the rezoning of this is not unlike, I guess, what you've done for the Baker site. Um, that was zoned also industrial and rezoned to multifamily. I don't think we're asking anything different than that. The fire department has looked at this and they will allow us to build up to 200 units on this development without connection to Aurora, which I think was the other concern as far as uh, how many units. We're proposing 186, so we're underneath that 200 unit count. So I'm here for any other questions. I have my design team here that can answer any questions also. Yeah, right. We probably want to have uh, Mike Ludwig speak to this also. Any questions? Mr. Nyberg? Steve, you said East 50th and Hubble a couple times. Didn't you mean East 50th and Broadway? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get right. to the north. All right. Steve, if you'll remain available, we may have some more questions after we... Mike? 
Mayor, County, members of the council, Michael Ludwig, Planning Administrator. Um, brief overview. Zoom in just a little bit, Diane. Um, as Mr. Niebuhr pointed out, uh, this is the first phase of the, uh, of the um, Summersfield PUD. There are as a continuation of single family approved on this parcel as you go to the north. Uh, it's about uh, 900 feet from where Northeast Aurora Avenue turns to Southeast uh, 48th Street. I'm sorry, Northeast 48th Street. It's about 900 feet from there to 50th Street on this plan. <clears throat> Just to step out a little bit larger aerial photo, I've crosshatched once again the area that's subject to the rezoning, Summersfield PUD existing, the terminus of Northeast Aurora Avenue. Um, access in this area, there's, there's over 200 acres of ground in this area, and uh, there can be no connections, obviously, to the bypass along the east edge of the property. Um, the access to the north to Broadway is limited. There are no uh, access points granted to this parcel. This was actually a remnant parcel of right away from the uh, bypass project, and there are no current access uh, rights to uh, uh, Broadway from this parcel going north. So ultimately, all of this area is accessed either by going south to Douglas Avenue or uh, utilizing existing street connections into the county subdivision that uh, lies to this, this is Capitol Heights subdivision in this area. Uh, the staff's recommendation to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission was we felt that this zoning should have a condition that ties connection of, of Aurora Avenue into this development. Uh, at the time, Summersfield PUD came in, they avoided having any connections onto Aurora Avenue, took all of their connections out to uh, Northeast 46th Street. Uh, they did dedicate additional right-of-way for widening of Aurora in the future, uh, but there was no plan for that widening at the time. Uh, this was a county subdivision plat, and um, there was not right of way dedicated, but we believe that there's at least an opportunity with the development of the property to accommodate a, a, a split right of way across the southern portion of the property. But overall, we just believe it's, it's critical from a transportation standpoint that if we don't make these connections going uh, back towards the uh, west, that that forces all the housing that will be developed on, on this parcel down to um, down to uh, Douglas Avenue, which will cause problems in the future. Um, this drawing shows uh, the uh, Silverleaf PUD, which was uh, approved for uh, Ted Grove on this parcel. We also have a PUD that was just generally uh, uses. Uh, this is low, medium density residential, so basically townhomes and then transi transitioning back to multifamily and a little bit of spot of commercial on this corner. Uh, this plan here would have to come back to the Planning Commission and, and Council for further review. This portion of the plan is already approved, and this was conceptual street layout as you went back up and where Aurora would potentially connect in the future. Um, it showed Aurora coming to the south because, once again, this was platted ahead of um, review um, by the city and uh, the thought was that ultimately it would probably would be better to have it that in a straight alignment potentially. There was the idea of a, a roundabout in the future to limit traffic. I believe that the concerns about truck traffic ultimately can be addressed by signage as far as uh, truck routes and that, uh, keeping trucks on 50th Street rather than going on Aurora. Uh, the applicant did uh, at uh, pre-application meeting initially show uh, the idea or concept of Aurora Avenue connecting. They did ask how many units could be built without building Aurora Avenue and that was where the fire code uh, requirement of a maximum of 200 units without a secondary access was, was quoted. Uh, at the zoning stage, they did come back with a concept that eliminated that access uh, or extension of Aurora, and they did come in under the 200 units. Uh, staff believes that while well, it may be necessary from a fire code standpoint to, to have a trigger at 200 units uh, from, a, from a transportation standpoint, we believe that the connection is 
is important. If it's not required as part of this zoning, we just definitely want to make certain that we're not conveying to residents in the area that the street connection will never be made. It, it is a critical connection in this area. We do want to make sure that that is, is uh, realized. Uh, this is the consent map to date. There is more than 20% opposition to the rezoning. That is what's triggering the six sevenths vote on the um, zoning uh, portion of the <coughs> consideration. Uh, I'm available if you have additional questions. Mike, can you explain the red down there at the very bottom, the large piece of red? Yes. Is that, um, which property is that? Is that part of, was that part of Silverleaf? Uh, this is owned by Nelson Family Farm. A portion of this property was sold to Ted Grove for uh -huh. his, his development, but this is north and east of where Ted Grove, uh, Ted Grove Silverleaf Beauty was approved. So Ted Grove was the one that signed this red here? No. It's Nelson? Yes. No. He does not own Nelson Family Farm. So who he bought actually, a portion of the property. Okay, but who actually signed the red document? Uh, Lynn M. Nelson. But isn't that where the uh, roundabout was pro projected to be Conceptually, there? Conceptually, yes. Conceptually, but that was on Grobe's design, but he didn't own that property then. No, Grobe did not own that property. It was a pre-application drawing that was submitted that showed the roundabout. Okay. Well, I have a real concern on how we're going to do, uh, get traffic into that property to the east farther beyond uh, uh, their proposed site. At some point in time, Aurora's got to be extended there. They have no access to come into that, uh, as I say it. Chief, did you want to make a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, John Kip, uh, Chief of the Fire Department. Uh, my comment really isn't about the the project itself, it, as Mr. Niebuhr said, that the, the project was being designed within the number of uh, occupancies to meet the code. But this is the um, just for your consideration, your awareness, as you look at the larger map, similar to what Councilmember Mahaffey just said in uh, Mike's comments. This is the point in time when people say, well, how did they plan it that way? If there is no connection between Aurora and East 50th and all those things, you're going to have a, a lot of technically uh, meeting the code projects that have really long response times for fire and EMS uh, with no real connections in between. So whether it is a residential development or a commercial development or just consideration of what goes wrong and people <coughs> call us, I appreciate when you look at making those connections. At some point, Aurora and something else will need to be connected across there or we're gonna drive uh, several miles to go 900 feet. So I, I'd appreciate your consideration on that, that bigger picture beyond just the project that's, that's immediately in front of you. Appreciate that comment, Chief. Chief, I have a question. When uh, we were discussing last year the elimination of a medic and you had the map with all the circles with the response time, Yes. that was all based on a first call. What happens if there's a second call? And uh, we've already got a couple stations <laughs> on the northeast side dispatched to it. For that location right there, the consideration was, as we do what you're considering and fill out and develop this northeast, would we need additional fire protection that was housed further to the northeast, somewhere from that East 38th to East 46th and Hubble area? Um, as this fills out, that, that, that uh, gives greater credence to my argument that something would need to happen there. If there's one medic call there and the, the medic squad from Easton and Hubble goes and there's a second call, then it's the medic squad from East 12th and Euclid. After that, it's probably the medic uh, squad from uh, 900 Mulberry or even all the way across uh, town. There is a limit to how far you can drive and still get there in a reasonable amount of time. So on a second call, we could really have an apartment building at this location uh, in dire straits for proper response time. Well, I don't think there's an immediate threat on the fire side because there simply are more apparatus which are, are, are in a closer proximity. It's a little more lean in the far northeast on the medic squad. But are we looking at um, recommendations for going further northeast? Sure. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm thinking about is you had a call last week to Goodwill at East 33rd and Euclid and two stations responded. Mm -hmm. Um, if that same thing would happen again, and my understanding is that once those stations are at that site, they can't leave until that situation's taken over or cleared up. 
Yes. You know, then you're talking about potentially going to 42nd the freeway for a medic unit. That's certainly true. Well, as a general rule, we're set up to handle what would be considered two medium-sized structure fires and a couple medic runs at a time. If we had more calls than that, we'd be out. But, but you're right. It is leaner in the corners because they're geographically not surrounded by our, our resources. They all come from one direction or another. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments for anybody? Mike, thanks for your comments. Well, Council, we've got um, a number of items here, 35A, B, and C, regarding those properties uh, <coughs> off of East 50th. We have a motion that um, anyone would like to make at this point. Bob? Well, <clears throat> I, I sent Steve an email late this afternoon, and I told him I would support tonight to get it on the docket, but I won't guarantee support in the future because I think we need to get something worked out as far as Aurora and how we're going to address those uh, to the east, that land and that. Uh, if we don't have a way, to, that's going to sit there idle for a long, long time if we don't have access in and out of there, I'm, I'm concerned. So I'd like to have Steve and staff get together and see if they can't work out something. Uh, in the future so that when it comes back to us, we'll have a, an answer for that. Uh, Mr. Attorney, how many readings does uh, it, uh, all these ordinances, everything requires three, uh, three votes? Or? For the ordinances, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so your uh, idea, Bob, would be to move this uh, for the first reading and then try to work out the details and when for comes, Aurora and comes back to us then we can make our decision as to whether we're going forward with it or we're going to have to uh, address it in another manner okay and can I just ask do we have a, a deadline that um, this has to be approved by are we looking at this is going to be market we didn't stay on the, the schedule excuse me go ahead um, could you uh, sorry uh, Steve Nieberg, if uh, we could stay on the schedule that Bob's proposing, I think, tonight, where we could uh, pass the first reading and give us time then to work through with staff and uh, toward the second reading. I think it gives us time between those two to stay on our schedule. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have Mayor. a motion. Mayor? Yes. I'd like to add to Bob's comment. Uh, I'm going to applaud you. I spoke with you last week about the sidewalk issue, and, and I'm pleased that you're willing to add that. I'm pleased that you spoke with school. A lot of people are concerned about that, and I'm hoping that Principal Walker is correct that it won't um, cause any ad adverse effects to the school. I do have an issue with Aurora. I'm going to support the motion tonight, but I'm going to piggyback with Bob that uh, we need to come up with an answer to that to get that opened up at the south end and on to Aurora. Seven yes. All right, we've uh, passed the first reading. Mayor, I, I have a I have a question, and I, I apologize. I meant to do this before we voted. Uh, our council said that it's the first reading on the ordinance, but um, item one or item A that would have passed that doesn't need to come back. That, that is correct. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to understand process and if if that was appropriate to pass. Do you see a problem if we were to reverse course in the future, as I think a couple of council members said they may? It can certainly be referred back to PNZ to be reviewed uh, at a later point in time. Okay. So that's acceptable to council. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Item 36, items regarding property at 3201, 3211, 3221 Forest Avenue and 1414 32nd Street and 3201 Forest LLC is the developer represented by Mike Nelson. 
Item A under that is to amend the Des Moines 2020 Community Character uh, Plan Future Land Use designation from low density residential and commercial pedestrian oriented co commercial corridor to a mixed use and density. B is a hearing on the rezoning of the property from C1 Neighborhood Retail Commercial R160 one family low density residential and R3 multiple family residential to limited NPC neighborhood pedestrian commercial to allow redevelopment of the property for pedestrian oriented multifamily residential apartments subject to conditions. C is the first consideration of the ordinance above and D is a request for a final consideration of the ordinance above by the applicant and requires six votes. All right, item 36, anyone here to speak to that? Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, my name is Larry James Jr., 3101 Ingersoll, Des Moines. I'm here on behalf of the uh, applicant, uh, developer 3201 Forest LLC. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is a uh, rezoning um, only. We're not looking at uh, the site plan at this time. Uh, my, my client is interested in, in redeveloping a, a block that is, is really blighted uh, just west of the Drake campus. Um, I'll bring, put up on the screen uh, conceptual site plan. So you can see uh, right over here would be, I think this direction is Jethro's. It's a gas station on the corner. KFC right there. Um, there is uh, single family houses over here. Uh, this currently is a site There used to be Academy Trophies on the corner. This is a vacant strip mall. Uh, this is a, there's a house right, about approximately right here. Uh, this is all owned by my client. This is a fourplex uh, converted um, house into a fourplex. Um, the plan would be to build, at this point, the conceptual plan is a uh, three-story residential apartment building, um, 48 units, approximately 68 parking spaces. Um, we have uh, uh, my client fully supports staff recommendation on the rezoning conditions. Uh, we've met uh, with the Drake Neighborhood Association board, received their support. Uh, we also met with the surrounding neighbors. Um, and we obviously have committed to coming back to uh, P and Z after meeting with the neighbors again and Drake University on the site plan and uh, elevations. Um, I think that we are very excited about this project, what it can bring to the area. So without having any questions. If, if I missed this, Mr. James, I'm sorry, but the carve out around, is that a single family home? No, it's a fourplex. It's a, uh, this right here. Yeah. It's currently, it's currently a, it's a fourplex. Uh, gentleman uh, does not want to sell the property. Um, the way the layout is currently, uh, Mr. Coleman is, is the, there's currently a commercial building here, and this mm -hmm. is also kind of a gravel parking lot and undeveloped space. So the end result will be pretty much the same as far as the layout goes, the site plan. Or had, was he uh, opposed to the uh, rezoning? He is. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are we're, we're pretty excited, though. We've got a lot of support from the Drake Neighborhood Association. Drake University uh, is on board, and, and they've they've been very supportive. Uh, PNZ supported this unanimously. Um, again, we have to go back to PNZ to uh, uh, get site plan approval. Um, so we're very confident we'll be able to come up with a solution that. Uh, really is a good benefit to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that area, that strip mall on the west side of that property has been vacant for a long time and it's been, yeah. it, would, it, it would be hard not to improve that. <laughs> <laughs> so. The plywood over the broken windows <laughs> looks phenomenal. All right, any uh, other comments or questions of the uh, applicant? Yes. You want um, I came to speak on 19, but missed it. Um, Nan Stillion, 1604 24th Street Place. 
I grew up on 33rd Street, and I pass this, uh, it's not a strip, it's not a mall, it's just, uh, used to Hold be off. a cleaner's and a plumber's and a grocery store and so on. Um, this will make an enormous change, an enormous change in what is just a little uh, residential area. And I would urge you, I've urged various people um, I know in the real estate business to look at that property over the last two years, and obviously um, uh, they didn't, but somebody else did. Um, I think you all need to look at the property and see how that will change the neighborhood, change the traffic patterns. It, 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 it was, when Derek Gord told me about this, uh, about two months ago, he's the president of the Drake Neighborhood Association, he said he didn't think it would go through. Now, I don't know who at Drake was on board or is on board, but those people at Drake who are on board should uh, be here tonight and talking to you. Uh, this, <laughs> this will be an enormous change in what is a college neighborhood. If it were going to be something uh, that would fit in with the uh, fraternity and sorority houses that are on 34th. Um, I don't know, you're all looking as though uh, <laughs> there may be more behind this, but I would say please take this very seriously and look at it. And uh, the neighbors who are all on board, I know neighbors who certainly are not on board, but they may not be close enough. So. Um, I, I was shocked that this was on tonight, and I am sorry I missed 19, but um, please pay attention to this. Other comments? Is there anyone else to speak on this item? Um, Larry, I'm sorry, I should have asked you when you were up here. Um, would it be a inconvenience to you if I only waived the first reading tonight in terms of timing? I, I, and the reason I ask, I, I do get the sentiment that there are some neighbors that had some traffic issues, and I just don't want to rush this through, particularly since we don't even have a site plan. I would say, in the, and I, you know, uh, I can tell you that I know my client is actively pursuing, uh, this is a tax credit project through Iowa Finance Authority. Um, you know, ideally we'd like to get the second and third wave to keep on that track. Um, I think the, to answer your question and to, to address uh, Ms. Stillian's uh, points, um, the, the Drake Neighborhood Association plan calls specifically for NPC zoning on this block, uh, specifically calls for uh, higher residential densities along forest. And so the developer looked at that plan um, so it did actively look at this project as something that is, meets the Drake Neighborhood Association plan. Um, uh, the Drake Neighborhood Association uh, voted to support this. Um, and again, the site plan review would be an extra step that we have to go through. So even if the council were to approve um, rezoning tonight and waive the second and third reading, Obviously, we still have to go back to the neighbors and go back to um, the surrounding neighbors and, and talk about those, those very issues. Um, so this doesn't give carte blanche to the developer to go out and build something under NPC guidelines. It really does go above and beyond what's normally required, as you know. Um, and we would have to go back to the neighborhood and, and present a, a site plan that everyone approves of. So we would ask for the second, third reading to be waived. And I, I know that the Drake, at least the Drake board, um, has approved of the project. Um, I know there were some people that spoke to parking and, and different traffic flow issues, and I think those can can certainly be addressed as this project moves forward. Um, okay, um, Wendy, if you have comments to make, we'd ask you to not only address the council, you, but this isn't a discussion between you and, and this gentleman here. No. You need to address it and put it on the record and do it at the podium. Would you like me to do it again? If you would like to make a comment, we, I'd like you to oh, let him finish his comment first. 
and then you can stand in line and then step up and say whatever you'd like to say. Any other questions? Okay. Wendy? Here's your name and address, please. Wendy Lucina, 4155 53rd Street, Des Moines, Iowa. When he stepped over here, I asked him about parking. Um, if you want to confirm the question that I asked you was how many units of parking Okay, space you need to purchase? put it on record and address okay. it to the microphone and the council because we're, we're the asked, ones that are voting I on this. I asked him how many parking spaces he has for the number of rental units in there because my concern would be that the Drake, U Drake Neighborhood Association is one of them that's included in the plow program that's an exception neighborhood, which does create additional costs for the city because the public works department is has, gonna have to go all the way up one, waste the gas, to come back around, then go up the next one, waste gas, come back around. According to the information this gentleman told me without speaking on his behalf, it appears that he has units that do fit under the current ordinance for parking, therefore he would not be putting any overload on street parking in regard to snow plowing. That was, and if you wanna confirm that for me. Okay. Um, and, and I think he already made mention that I believe there's 68 spaces for 48 units or right. some, yes. something was, similar the, to that. The, the current conceptual plan shows 68 parking spaces and 48 uh, apartment units, so there'd be more right. than adequate parking. And I guess when the, when the site plan does come forward, I would just like the city to work with the neighbors as well as uh, Mike Nelson to make sure that parking is appropriate for the area. And I think based on kind of the pro preliminary print yeah, the, er, the early conceptual plans, I think, were um, on the right track as far as that goes. So um, based on the, the timeline and, and lack of opposition, frankly, here tonight, I will move item 36, A, B, C, and D. Before I vote, I've got a question. Uh, Larry, where'd you go? I think that I, I also would like to have uh, some further understanding uh, from the neighborhoods uh, it, short of um, denying the whole thing, uh, I, I would like to separate maybe um, item D and uh, see if we couldn't at least address some of those other issues before our next meeting. What uh, other issues, Mr. Mayor? Well, uh, regarding some of the things that uh, 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 one of your neighbors uh, pointed out, who's uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Stillians that's sitting behind you, and uh, regarding uh, circulation, parking, um, and, and without a site plan, I kind of wish we had, you know, a full idea of what, you, what you're doing. NPC, it almost sounds like a totally uh, uh, residential deal. I don't know if at some point you're talking about putting something underneath. Are we talking about are these all efficiencies? Or are they two-bedroom apartments, in which case if there's students renting them, maybe need more than 68 parking places? Um, I, I just don't know all sure. the details um, at, the, at the moment. Well, I'll leave that to staff. I think the 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 issue would be that um, again, we're, when the developer has to go back to under NPC, the developer has to go back to the uh, staff and is committed to going back to the neighborhood to uh, review a site plan that is going to be acceptable to everyone. Uh, I think that uh, we've shown that we've have have had tremendous support from the neighborhood association and from Drake University. Um, that the developer is committed to addressing all of the traffic issues which would occur at that next step, which would occur when we do develop a site plan and when we do um, uh, have those additional meetings. Uh, there is an extra step we have to go through uh, in order to get this approved. Uh, What's your deadline for the applications on the tax credits? Well, IFA application has already been submitted. Um, the developer, uh, frankly, is trying to determine um, at which stage uh, to complete the site plan uh, to get this up and running probably wouldn't happen until the IFA award is, is a decision has been made. Um, that's kind of where, where we're at right now. 
but I think with the, the recommendations that uh, staff has made um, on the restrictions to the, pro the property, I think that um, we would be uh, uh, able to um, only do certain things with the property, and I think the, um, a lot of the issues that uh, you're raising tonight would be addressed at the site plan uh, stage. It is, is the urgency um, about the application, you have to have certain things done before, or it, it, I'm trying to get my arms around sure, why sure. we're rushing this through. We, if, if, I think if we could uh, get it done tonight, we'd obviously like to get it done tonight. Uh, if the uh, council would like additional time, you know, I will defer to council, obviously. Um, I think that my client has made me aware of a, a deadline of some sort in early December that we have to address. Uh, specifically, I'm not sure what that deadline is, but it does relate to IFA funding. Okay. Uh, it's beyond my purview tonight. Uh, but, but frankly, I am um, uh, trying to, I guess, commit to you tonight, as I did to uh, P&Z, that uh, the developer has a very good track record um, in developing multifamily housing in the city. Um, that uh, the developer has to go back and get site plan approval, um, work with the neighborhood, and work with the uh, Drake University. Uh, and I think by the end uh, that we will come back and have a site plan that would be very attractive and, and uh, really bring a lot to, the, to that area, especially in line that this is a project which is uh, in line with the Drake neighborhood plan, which specifically calls for in this block uh, higher density multifamily housing. <clears throat> so developers simply trying to respond to the, the lengthy planning process already occurred um, with the uh, Drake neighborhood. Okay. Um, so. Hallie, back to your motion. I, I think I agree with everybody that uh, I like the idea of moving uh, a quality project ahead with a quality developer and, and all that. I'm just short of understanding the urgency to 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 do it without any comment at all by Drake, without it, um, any written comment, at least that I can see from uh, anybody else, but certainly uh, with a reputable lawyer uh, standing to say that there are a lot of folks that are that are very supportive of it. Uh, Drake Neighborhood. Uh, um, I believe the letter's in the file, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Along with a, a letter from Drake University. All right. Is there evidence of that? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, with uh, Drake University, um, they signed one, and then I think the Drake neighborhood did as well. Um, I, having spent a lot of time on plan and zone, I uh, I'm, have been somewhat reluctant through the years to just send something through uh, without a site plan there, just flat rezoning something to something else. But NPC does have the requirement that they need to make the um, uh, further presentation to get a site plan approval. So the NPC requires that. But uh, um, generally, I'm somewhat reluctant to do it. But I think in this case, rather than... With all due respect, all you need to do is drive by the space yeah. and drive down 33rd and up Clark and up 32nd to see how this is going to change the nature of traffic on Forest and, uh, and with all due respect to Larry James, who deserves a great deal, this is going down too fast. Again, we'd ask that anybody that has comments, we'd like you to make them to the microphone so it goes on the record. And. Uh, um, I, uh, Larry, I'm, I'm supportive of it, but I, uh, I really would like to just pass the first reading tonight, and so I'm going to say that to, to Hallie. Um, so I'm uh, yes on A, B, and C, and no on D. Madam Clerk. So we have six yes on A, B, and C, and I guess Mr. Moore. No on D only? No, I would vote for A, B, and C, but no on D no only. On D. Uh, if you want me to make a new motion, Mayor? Yeah, whatever you would like to. I'll move <coughs> item 36, A, B, and C. <clears throat> mm. 
Seven yes. And Larry, I appreciate your work on this. Um, good work. Look forward to working with the developer. Item 37, on the vacation of various street and alley right-of-ways for the Southeast Connector Project. A, is the first consideration of the ordinance above. B, is the final consideration of the ordinance above. The waiver is requested by the city engineer and requires six votes. Uh, C, has been struck. Um, any questions or comments from the audience on item 37 on the vacation for rights of way for the Southeast Connector. I'll move 37 A and B. Item's been moved. Seven yes. Item 38, on the sale and conveyance of city-owned property at 2843 and 2839 Indianola Avenue to Hatch Development Group, LLC. Council communication number 12-561. Is there anybody to speak on this? Mr. Manager. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, I would just note that extra item number two is uh, related to this item, the same development we have had to revise the uh, financing documents that relate to the action you took at your last meeting. It doesn't increase the city's commitment but we would like your consideration and approval of that because it allows the project to move forward a little bit. Staff uh, worked over the weekend with Mr. Hatch and company to get the documents prepared and we would recommend those to you as well. So if you wanted to take up extra item which relates to this project at this time, I simply wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, move 38. Uh, and I'll move the extra item. All right, and for the record, uh, extra item two is authorizing the city manager to amend the home agreement with Hatch Development Group for redevelopment of the Southern Meadows site at 2800 Southeast 8th Street. Sponsors Council Member Meyer. Council communication number 12 574, I think the highlights of which uh, the manager has touched upon, uh, essentially showing how item two, extra item, and item 38 are. Related. Any comment by anyone? Is that an amendment to the original motion or do we have to vote twice? There's two actions. Two actions. Seven yes. You need another vote on the second one? That would be preferred. I'll move extra item two. Seven yes. All right, item 39, on the request from Conlon Properties, Inc., represented by James C. Conlon, to rezone property at 3710 Hubble Avenue from C2, general retail and highway-oriented commercial to R160, one-family, low-density residential, all to PUD, planned unit development for development of 254 residential dwelling units and A is the first consideration of the ordinance above. Anyone in the audience to comment on these items? Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Jim Conlon, 319 7th, uh, Des Moines. Uh, this is the old uh, doll site on uh, <coughs> Uh, Douglas and uh, uh, Douglas and uh, Hubble. Uh, I've been negotiating on this site for six years, and uh, Dolls had had a number of offers on it. Uh, finally, we got together. Uh, they had it appraised, and it was appraised by uh, Fred Locke's company, and I identified it as a multifamily site. So what we've done. Uh, <clears throat> I'll let Mr. Saltzgaver go through the particulars on the site. But one thing that we've done, we're working with uh, DART in attempting to establish a uh, uh, 
transportation hub there for the entire neighborhood. Uh, uh, it's across the street from Quick Trip, and uh, hopefully there'll be a dog park going quickly on the other side of the street, which uh, this will be a pet-friendly project. And um, uh, it currently has an assessed value of 825000 and what we propose is constructing a property uh, with a total value of 20, 25 million. And uh, actually, we're down zoning it to uh, PUD to give you more control. It uh, will hold 254 units, and that's what we're proposing in a senior project, which would be 60 units with underground parking, uh, duplexes or single family along 38th. And uh, this will be one of the first projects, I think, on the east side where all of these buildings will be elevated. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I am Doug Salt, Scaver Engineering Resource Group, 2413 Grand Avenue, Des Moines. Uh, a few more specifics about the project. Uh, to the east, there are some single-family homes. Uh, those lots are uh, uh, very deep, I think, in the 350-foot-plus range. Uh, so the back of the existing homes to the back of either the duplex or single-family homes would be in the 300-foot range, so there's quite a separation. Also, what we'd be looking at is grading down that area to, on the, or the east side of our property. Uh, probably in the seven, eight, nine foot range, which will give uh, more uh, buffer area between those single family homes and uh, planting uh, the city staff required uh, buffer in there of a uh, variety of different species of trees. Also these either duplex or single family homes would be single story and that's by design that we're looking at trying to step from where the single family is to potentially duplexes of uh, low height, and then uh, as we go west to the uh, three-story uh, apartment buildings and the uh, uh, senior center. And uh, also tonight here is uh, the architect, uh, Pierce Cody. He can uh, speak to you on the architecture of the buildings if you're interested. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Pierce Cody, Simonson & Associates, 1717 Ingersoll Avenue. Uh, just a very quick overview of the project, or if we can, thank you. Um, the, the project is uh, considered to be, all, all of the multifamily structures would be uh, three stories, uh, full depth masonry, uh, at a minimum up to the first floor, and then in certain areas, we would be bringing that up higher, so in many places we have actually two and sometimes three stories of brick. Uh, the siding would all be a hardy plank siding, uh, painted with a hardy board trim, uh, and then a 30-year uh, heavy-duty asphalt shingle. Uh, even the single-family structures that are against the east side of our property would uh, have these same materials. So the intent would be that we have a harmonious uh, development throughout. So. Uh, if there's anything more I can tell you about the architecture of the projects, I'd be happy to. You'll have elevators in a, a, a three-story, the multi-story, right? That is correct. We'll have them both in the senior projects and the and the uh, family projects as well. Other questions? And it's my understanding this is a phase project. Yes. Did it happen over the the plan that Doug showed would be in its full built-out condition? Uh, I believe the first. Uh, phase would probably be the senior center and then subsequent phases would build one or two stories or two projects after that uh, depending to some degree upon uh, availability of tax credits. Okay. Thank you. And I believe I understood you say the underground parking at the senior center? Uh, yes, senior that's correct. Housing. The, the grade slopes down from the right. east to the west and really uh, offers a great opportunity for that. I think this project is uh, uh, very well situated because the dart route goes right down Hubble there, 
and they are willing to work with DART to build a shelter for the people that are waiting for buses and that, and uh, been getting a lot of cooperation from uh, Mr. Connolly on those things. Excellent. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Anybody else uh, want to speak on this item? We'd ask you to come over on this side, please. Okay, we have two more speakers. Is anybody else planning on speaking? That's fine. That's yours. All right. Council, there will be two more people speak on this. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is August Luthens, 2511 East Tiffin, Des Moines, Iowa. I represent single dwelling homeowners along East 38th Street. Looking at this map, here we have Hubble, and uh, along here, East 38th Street. My clients live in this area right here. And at present, in this area right here, are a strong line of mature trees and shrubs. My clients are very concerned about privacy. If this project goes through, we're going to have 300 to 400 people living in their backyards uh, within, within 100 feet of their home. Uh, we we uh, request that the council give consideration to compel the developer to maintain the tree line for privacy purposes. They have a concern concerning potential crime in the area. Now you've got 300 people who are all renters right next door. Uh, this area, changes the map here a little bit. Uh, I guess it's probably better. This area right here is a low area that's often subject to flooding. Right down here you have uh, Four Mile Creek. And uh, it is our consideration, we request your consideration and that this building at the end not be built. This is subject to flooding periodically. And then the builders are saying, well, we're going to dig down deep eight feet to put these homes in. Uh, it's going to be a rather incredible feat to dig down eight feet and then have proper drainage into Four Mile Creek. In any event, we're concerned about the privacy issue. They propose putting up a six foot fence and that's not going to cut it. If you have six foot fence and you're looking at 300 people in, in these various three-story structures and, and homes, the value of your home cannot be increased. It's obviously a decrease in value. So they're, 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 wanting, they're wanting the developer to leave the trees as a privacy issue and then not build this last threeplex and make it a private park because you're going to have flooding there anyhow. To build a threeplex in that flooded area uh, doesn't seem reasonable under the circumstances. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Luthens? We'll move on to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ron Holt. I'm a resident homeowner on East 38, 4014. Um, I have a couple concerns, and that is the east side is in the area that we're speaking about is already laden with apartments. There's apartments at the East 33rd and Euclid, East 31st and Euclid, East 37th and Hubble, 3600 block of East Douglas, 3900 block of Hubble, the 4000 block of Hubble for two blocks continuous, uh, 4200 block of Hubble. At East 42nd and Hubble, there are some senior apartments. There's brand new apartments being built further east that was already spoken about this evening. Um, my concern is, is that do we really need another huge complex in this area? 
You've already heard tonight from the fire department their concern of response time for the northeast sector. Um, they're concerned about a very small area earlier this evening. Now they're talking about a 254 complex, which would make the situation worse. Also, um, it was mentioned that the neighborhood associations have all been contacted and the area residents have been contacted. I was not contacted regarding these hearings until the city of Des Moines sent out letters. At East Hubble, Hubble and East Douglas is a very, very poor intersection for traffic control. If you add a 254 complex in that area, not controlled by stoplights, it's good. I think it's a disaster waiting to happen. Thank you very much. I had a question. Didn't Mr. Saltzgaber say that the lots are really deep over there, off of 38? Didn't you say like 300 feet or so? If you can zoom in on that, yeah. please. Yes. There's East 38. Mm -hmm. There are the single family homes that mm -hmm. are served off of that street and the lot depth. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can see the separation we have from the yeah. back of these uh, duplex or single family units to the back of those homes. So well, I, I thought Mr. Luthen said there was only like 100 feet. I wanted to make sure that they understood yeah. it's a lot more than 100 feet back there. Correct. And uh, um, I thought you said at one point in time you may have wanted to maintain that tree line through there. Yes, we'd like to keep the mature trees. And I think that's, he was asking for that, and I think that you've accommodated that. Yeah, we'd, we'd prefer to keep the trees if we could, yes. And, and, if that, I may, and then that land that you're moving, aren't you going to put that down on the west side to, to raise that a little bit? Correct, yes. Yeah. So and to maintain that from the four mile, it'd be higher than what it is today. Yes. And... Currently, none of this property is contained in the 100-year uh, floodplain, and this building that the gentleman was speaking of, will, the floor of it will probably be at least 10 foot above the 100-year floodplain. Mm -hmm. So, how about the 500-year floodplain? I would say it would be above that as well. Any further questions, Mr. Conlon? Uh, yes. Uh, one other comment I'd have. We own this property, which will uh, give us access out through there. And in terms of flooding, this property flooded and cost us a million one hundred thousand dollars to repair, which we did not ask for one penny from the city. We did appreciate the governor coming out with boots and a <coughs> life jacket for a photo op, but. And to address the safety issue in fire, where the dolls was there in the uh, past, it won't right. be any different. You'll have more accessibility with exactly. the streets exactly. than what they had. Yeah. Yes, sir. Any questions? No, I, w I would just like to address one of the other comments that was made. Um, Mr. Conlon does just an excellent job. Of, of all of the developers that we work with, um, I think Mr. Conlon goes way above and beyond. and. Um, I've not known him to have any problems. If there was an isolated instant, instance, it was taken care of um, very quickly. So um, I just feel that the amenities that are part of uh, Mr. Conlon's project really set them apart from the other projects that we um, look at. I appreciate that. I, we haven't even gotten into the playgrounds and one thing and another, but here what we're constructing is a, a 24 by 32 foot uh, exercise facility. Uh, it'll have an office in it also, but it'll be an action. We just did one of these in West Des Moines by the police station, West Des Moines, a project we did out there. And it has four stations in it, uh, uh, flat screen TVs, and it can be accessed by any resident there 24-7. Uh, Thanks, Jim. Any other questions? Any other comments? We'll close the public hearing. Any uh, comments from the council? If there are no comments, I'll certainly move uh, Bob, item 39. I'd like to have staff come up first on okay. this. Michael, do you happen to have one of those 
maps that shows uh, who was in favor and who was opposed. I didn't find one in my packet. Yeah, there is one there. This falls within the guidelines then of the 20%. One other question is Mr. Reeves had wrote on his card twice that he'd like to be contacted and have this explained to him. What, what do we do when residents ask that? We make our best attempt to contact them and, and talk that, and we can still uh, contact the applicant again and discuss after this meeting if you would like. I, I wish you would. I know Mr. Reeves personally, and I don't think he was for it or opposed to it. He's just got some questions. We'll make effort to contact him tomorrow. Thank you. Bob? Okay. Uh, no, seeing no further questions, I'll move item 39 and uh, look forward to the development. <laughs> Seven yes. Item 40 on the proposed uh, fourth 2013 year action plan of the 2010-2014 U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD Consolidated Plan, Council Communication Number 12-569. Anybody have any questions on that, either Council or anybody in the audience? I'll move item 40. And moved. Seven yes. Item 41, closing the public hearing and withdrawing the consideration of establishing the Beaver Beaverdale Self-Supported Municipal Improvement District's Mid, Council Communication Number 12-560. Anybody here to talk about that? I guess I'll move item 41. I don't believe we're allowed to, to speak on it, is my understanding from legal. Seven yes. Item 42, on Beaver Avenue and Aurora Avenue traffic signals, the resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, and receive and file of bids and designate the lowest responsible bidder as Iowa Signal Inc. Wayne Leslie, President, $95,486.58, Council Communication Number 12-565, A is approving the contract and the bond. I'll move item 42, 42A. Item's been moved, anyone to speak? Seeing none. Seven this minutes. is a great project, it looks great. And let's note that with a positive and affirmative vote on that, we ended after that great project at 6.07. Let's now move to item 43, which is an agreement for shared use of park and recreation facilities in Des Moines Independent Community School District facilities, Council Communication Number 12-571. Mr. Manager, did you want to touch on this real quickly? Like I could say a couple of words about it. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, this is uh, actually in some respects a continuation of an arrangement that the city has had uh, with the school board to share facilities. It is uh, a good arrangement, uh, maximizes public assets that are used by both the city and the school. Uh, it is mutually supportive, I believe, and mutually beneficial to both institutions. Uh, and, and one other thing I want to mention, I'll ask the mayor to comment about it as well, and that is the whole issue of looking for ways for local government to collaborate better and make uh, more efficient use of our tax resources. has been a goal that this council has long encouraged, and the mayor in particular has uh, been a leader in that regard. Uh, the mayor and I had the occasion to meet with school officials not too long ago and talk about this very subject. and. I found the response uh, from them positive uh, and one that we will continue to look for these sorts of opportunities and others where we can perhaps uh, share resources, uh, save a dollar or two as we go forward. But this is a positive, uh, a positive step for us uh, and one that we would recommend to you. And Mr. Mayor, I might ask you to say a word or two about our discussions on that. 
Uh, Mr. Manager, I think that you've kind of covered the high points, but for those listening, I am very encouraged. I think the, um, the one independent community school district and the city of Des Moines are looking forward to having um, a number of meetings to discuss opportunities to, to work together as we do with other bodies in our area. Uh, we work through the MAC to try to do it regionally with other uh, municipalities and cities and counties in the area. And I think this is an opportunity uh, because almost exclusively, uh, with a few exceptions, um, the people that are taxpayers in the city of Des Moines are also uh, taxpayers that support the Des Moines Independent Community School District. So uh, generally speaking, um, we, we have similar interests and similar constituencies, and I think it, it serves us all well when we all work together to try to see how we can best use our resources to better serve our people, and especially our young people, thinking about the future of our, of our city. So. Mr. Manager, thanks for your comments. And with that, um, we have an agreement of shared use of park and rec facilities and the Des Moines Independent Community School District uh, uh, as part of our council agenda tonight. And again, um, ask for a motion to support that agreement. Move. It's been moved. Mayor, I'd like to comment on this. Yes, sir. Um, I've got an original copy of the lease agreement that the city of Des Moines and the school, independent school signed um, concerning Prospect Park and the Rice Elementary site. Um, we had an agreement that they could use Prospect Park and put in a parking lot as long as they maintained the Rice site for the Northwest Soccer Club which we know that they sold the Rice site, and then I heard that the agreement was they could use the Hoover site, and I've heard there's been problems with that. Now Northwest Soccer is going out of town. Um, I'm gonna vote no on this, but I'd sure like to know from the Northwest Soccer Club uh, how they feel about that agreement that we wrote and uh, the school district never supported. Appreciate your comments, Mr. Moore. I think the, the point here is we're trying to move forward and, and uh, clean up agreements so that they are uh, mutually beneficial to the citizens of the city of Des Moines. And we uh, will note your comments regarding some uh, aging agreements of the past. Suggest one no. Uh, have another extra item. These are items that were presented after the 5 p.m. deadline on uh, Wednesday and uh, were put on by city council members or the mayor, and uh, one of which we have discussed already. I, the first one uh, of extra items is an acceptance of a temporary easement for the construction of 2309 Euclid Avenue from Polk County. Uh, sponsor is Council, Council Member Helly Grease, Council Communication Number 12-573. Council Member Grease. Um, if there's no one to speak on this, engineering brought this forward um, and I sponsored it. Um, I believe it's fairly routine, so I will move extra item one. Anybody to speak on this item this evening? It's been moved. It looks like another issue of com Binding with Polk County and the city of Des Moines to utilize the area there, so it's good. Right. Seven yes. We've already heard item two, uh, which is to amend the home agreement with Hatch Development. Item three is an application to IFA, the Iowa Finance Authority, for low income tax credits in the Des Moines area. The uh, sponsor of this is Councilmember Coleman. Mr. Coleman, do you want to make a quick comment on this? I do. Brian, can I steal it from you? I'm going to flash up a, a map. Um, and uh, obviously, it's uh, too detailed for us to um, d drill into any specifics. But uh, what you'll see on there is uh, red dots, and some of them are overlapping, where the low income tax credit projects. Uh, are in our community. There were a number on our agenda tonight that we rezoned or considered, and while um, we needed to view those 
for the merits of the zoning themselves, as uh, council has uh, advised us. We do expect many of those to come back for low income tax projects. Um, the state no longer asks the city to weigh in or provide uh, our own advice or approval for those projects that go there um, and that are considered at the state. I think that is a, a disadvantage to the city of Des Moines and the citizens that we represent. And, and so I'd like to do a couple of things today. I have a, uh, a desire that we could forward to the city manager and our city legal um, uh, this issue of um, communication, leverage, uh, input to IFA with regards to what projects are approved or considered. Um, uh, while we don't have a legislative committee anymore, we do have a legislative agenda that the two of you will coordinate. And uh, that, that seems to be uh, maybe one avenue for us to consider how we get some city input into this process. This, the second uh, matter is the density of these projects. Uh, I know you can't see it. Diane, could you drill in just a, a little bit more? At the very northeast, um, uh, you, you see Hubble Avenue going out, and there's a yellow dot, which is a proposed project. What, what you can't see is in that parcel right there, there also happens to be four overlapping red circles of projects that already exist there. And while this map was prepared for just low-income housing tax credit projects, there are also um, public housing units that the city owns, uh, Section 8 uh, vouchers that are used around the community. And over the last year, we've approved the location of several projects that are CDBG. Uh, for instance, we had the project that was contemplated um, on, on the south side with some CDBG um, that, that's now going to Hubble. There's also projects that aren't on here at Franklin Field, which is now underway. Construction is in the Des Moines building and, and uh, Ingersoll and ML King. I, I draw your attention to this, and I've shared this with some of the developers that do a lot of these housing. I have a long-term fear when we create the kind of density we are in certain neighborhoods for shelters, for pawn shops, for other things. We've considered uh, zoning issues that create some uh, separation so that we don't get a density of issues that uh, might be of long-term uh, significance or consequence to the city. Um, and it's my hope that the council might refer this to the city manager and our team, to our legal staff, to recommend ways that uh, by council rule, we might find ways to not create the kinds of density that exist right now without a council policy or direction that's different than that. Um, it's not that I don't want these to happen. In fact, uh, if, if I had my choice, we would be doing more of these. We'd spread them out and that every project uh, would be required to have some market rate housing as part of it. So if they were going to IFA for, um, you know, 100 units in an apartment complex, some of those would be taxpayer supported through tax credits for affordable units with an income limit, but some of them would have to be market rate, so we create a true neighborhood in these areas and they don't just become all low income housing in that kind of density. I'm not gonna speak any longer on it because I really don't have a outcome I just really want to engage the council in this issue and ask the manager to kind of work towards a workshop, get us more information. I'd like to see this map with um, other government supported housings that has income restrictions to kind of see the density that we're creating in certain neighborhoods. And, and then for the council to really determine what impact that should have on the public policies that we set and the decisions we make. Um, so I'm gonna refer that to you in hopes of you thinking through how we can have a productive conversation and what kind of research is necessary uh, to deliver uh, strategies to the council. Does that make sense, manager? Yeah, I think it does, Mr. Coleman. Council member will be happy to do the research. And, and, and immediately, please get this map to all of my colleagues. Yeah. 
Ms. Hensley. I would just like to add uh, the Polk County Housing Trust Fund is having this very same discussion. They've done some excellent tours throughout the community on affordable housing, and they have a, a, a great uh, wealth of information. I was just at their board meeting Friday where they were discussing it, so they would be a, a real key um, group to be involved and maybe even actually be part of a workshop. But Iowa Finance Authority needs to be at the table, obviously. And the bigger issue that was not touched upon here is the fact that you look at this for the city of Des Moines, I'd love to see this map for the greater metropolitan area because we really under, we know that that's why the proposal uh, was changed to not require a letter of support from the city because um, they were not successful in placing tax credit projects really outside the city limits of Des Moines in many cases. So um, we, we need to look at all of that in totality. It, and I'd like to add to that, unless somebody else has something else to, to say about this. Um, we have had ongoing discussions um, with, with IFA about how they recommend for these kinds of projects and what kind of quality um, is appropriate for this. this. And they removed not only uh, um, the weight that the city council could add in recommendation of projects, but also they put a ceiling on, on how much it would cost. And knowing uh, in certain areas where, where people need housing, we would also like to see quality housing that's able to go into an area uh, that, that meets appropriate uh, design guidelines and configurations, and sometimes in a urban area that's already established in a city that's over 100, 150 uh, years old, often that those, those guidelines uh, and the infrastructure that has to be put in place is a little bit different, a little more expensive than doing it in the middle of a cornfield uh, out in, in some place uh, in other parts of Iowa. Um, it's, uh, uh, so I think we need to continue to have the communication uh, amongst ourselves, not only to set guidelines here, but to uh, have further discussion with IFA about how this, this should move forward in the quality of housing that uh, all people of Iowa should uh, uh, expect. And certainly uh, um, a lot of those that qualify for uh, these low uh, income supported projects. So I uh, appreciate um, that coming before the council and uh, uh, Councilman uh, Coleman for your getting this on, on our agenda for this evening. So. Um, you have a motion? Uh, I do. I, I'll refer the comments and the request for a research, a background study, um, and potential strategies to the city manager and city legal, and uh, for for us at the appropriate time to schedule a workshop that includes this uh, this agenda item. Okay. Seven yes. All right, uh, prior to our adjournment, uh, we had one of our citizens come in that missed an item, item 19. Uh, if you would like to make some comments, uh, Ms. Delians, about that, we would like to add that. We, what we have done is we referred that particular item to the city manager for comment. Uh, this needs to come back before the council and set hearing on it uh, some moment in the future. Uh, not only would, if you want to make a few comments now, we'd like to have you do that, but also uh, probably you want to stay in contact with the manager's office to see uh, how their referral is going and, and maybe get some of your input uh, included as, as comment. So if you would, yeah. could we have a, a motion to um, maybe uh, I would like add, to. add comment to item 19? Thank you. I would uh, like this. We need a motion. Oh, pardon me. Okay, it's been moved. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, item 19 is now reopened. Can I show? The, <clears throat> is there a possibility yes. to see showing this? Mr. Coleman, could you help her get the, that? Yeah. I think it's, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Uh, the area that is, has the cross hatching on it is uh, the area owned by, what, is it Mr. Riesenberg or Reisenberg? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and um, he came by the property that uh, 
runs along the drive, which is the dark black line there, um, recently. What I am wondering is if you put, I mean, you then did not put any caveats on him, or did you only received the issue? That what, what, what was the motion? Diane can look back at the minutes, but basically the motion was to refer to the city manager to work with him yeah. to, I, I think he had some fencing questions right. in particular. It, it, it's, it's, such a comp it's such a large piece of property, and it has gone down so fast, particularly the part along the drive, it was complicated by gone down in, in what terms in in quality or that it's sinking or falling away or uh, no it's just a fence that would go the, the long distance okay that area is not as steeply dropping into the uh, ravine but there is the waterway that is you can see the stream there <coughs> And there are questions that have to do with DNR and have to do with a survey and study that students up at Iowa State made about a decade or more ago. There, there are so many questions involving this much land that, uh, and also confusions because people were approached last summer about vacating the uh, right away of Franklin Avenue, which is, you see the top of the stirrup upside down. Mm -hmm. This area down to here. When you look at, when you stand here at this corner and look back at the right of way, you see that that should not be an issue without a great deal of study, and it isn't because it was tabled or it was set aside. But the fence that this gentleman wants to, and he, he seems very enthusiastic, uh, but there have been various uh, reasons for the fence. And until those things can get sorted out and we could meet, we have never met him. We've only exchanged emails back and forth. Uh, but there are a number of people along the drive that know nothing about this, knew nothing about this until last week. So okay. um, could, could, let's try to fashion um, something that would include um, getting as much information as possible from the sources, at least the, the ones maybe that you've mentioned, and what make I would that like part of our discussion, and maybe, <coughs> Mr. Manager, have a meeting between some of the neighbors and um, what Mr. I would Reisenberg. like would be Councilman Moore, who is an expert in trees, and there are thousands of trees in that property. And if if this it's his property now, he can do as he will. But if he wanted to harvest the fallen trees, some of which could probably still be used for lumber, or there are certain things he could do. The the fact that he wants to fence a long portion of land there that would keep the neighbors across from going into the territory, unless he has a, fan, a gate or something. It's just an unknown, and it came along so suddenly. And there are confusions because of the question of the right of way. It needs more study, and I would appreciate it if the city manager, Mr. Riesenberg, and uh, some of the neighbors could meet together in one place and look at the map. Or, uh, better, uh, we could arrange a meeting somewhere near the territory. Nan, what, what is, I, I got several emails and correspondence from you and Mr. Riesenberg this past week. I, what is, what's your concern in terms of what he's going to do? Because it's my understanding that all he wants to do is build a fence around the perimeter of his property to prevent illegal dumping. That, that's my understanding of what he wants. Well, so I'm not sure I understand what your concern is for the property. When you have that much land in the city, and it all belongs to one person who is not, uh, is not known to the people around, and he's, I've looked at his, the house he very recently bought, um, the little, 
this little point. I spent three days on this last week. So um, he bought this house very recently. It's rented. It is not. It should not be in the condition it's in. Uh, rented because it doesn't meet code at all for rental. And um, there are just too many question marks in this. And question marks. S such as, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just not sure. I'm tracking with you. I mean, he he purchased a plot of property and he's putting a fence around it. I just don't see what what the questions. Uh, and he's not asking for a rezoning. He's only asking for a vacation so he can move the fence line closer to the for property now. line. Yes, for now. Uh, but, um, Mr. Manager, do you want to uh, quickly address well, let me, maybe let me a couple of, and, uh, maybe summarize? Nan and council members. So wh where we are process-wise is the Plan Zoning Commission is taking an initial action. That's what's got it on the agenda tonight. Uh, the council's action earlier was to refer it back to us. Good. To go through all the analysis, at, at which time we'll look at the vacation proposals, prepare the ordinances, and the council's direction was to look at the fence and the other issues that you've talked about. It's pretty apparent to me that one of the problems is that you and your neighbors haven't really had a chance to converse with him, so you don't know what the proposals are. We'll make sure that that happens. We'll talk to him and make sure that he visits with you, and we can help that process along as well. All of that has to be done before council can really take any definitive action. We'll make sure those things happen, and as you watch the process, it'll come back here for a formal hearing, at which time, hopefully, all the answers to your questions will be available. I very much appreciate that, but please understand that my awareness that the city's emphasis is now on development makes me just a little uh, nervous. Understood. Mayor. Dan, I'm really flattered your comments about me being a tree expert, however. Um, we have a new municipal arborist on staff that if he is not the first and foremost in the country, he's definitely one of the top ten. He's recognized around the country. And if uh, the manager would ha ask him to just take a look at the property, see what he thinks, believe me, trust in him. The guy is good and he knows what he's doing. All right. Thank you. All right. Do we I'll, have a motion? I'll make the same motion prior to refer to the city manager to work with the neighborhood and Mr. Riesenberg. Six yes. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Manager, you want to make a quick comment? We've got a uh, um, sort of an interview process uh, we're about to undertake, and uh, maybe you could quickly fill us in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Just an announcement for your benefit and the public's benefit this Wednesday beginning at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 until 6. Uh, we are holding a public reception at Bright Grandview Clubhouse uh, to, in order for the public to meet the three candidates for a parks director. They will all be there uh, during that two-hour period. I think it's two hours, James, at which time the council or the public can uh, visit with the, with the individuals that are the candidates, uh, and it's an opportunity for you to sort of see firsthand uh, who's expressed an interest in that particular job and who's made it through the process thus far. The formal interviews will then take place the following day, but this is uh, a great opportunity to meet the candidates. <coughs> Pardon me? Will be I'm sorry, interviews are earlier, but the public reception is four to six on Wednesday at Bright Grandview Clubhouse. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. All right, to everybody that's watching this, thank you for staying with us. Um, I would urge everybody, we've had an exciting year or two years leading up to a national election. We hope that you'll all get out and vote, regardless of your party affiliation. This is uh, important for the future of our country. So tomorrow's voting day, get out and vote. Thank you. Could we have a motion to adjourn? If it's been moved, all in favor say aye. We sit adjourned. Uh,